All right, we want to welcome everybody tonight, whoever's going to be tuning in to this. And I'll probably have to say this again, but make sure you make a note of it, a mental note or a note. Uh, next, next Wednesday we will not be here, so don't come. Because I'm not going to be here and we're going to give everybody a night off for Thanksgiving Day. So it's Wednesday you can fast all day so you can eat like a house on Thanksgiving. I don't know. <laughs> so my favorite holiday is Thanksgiving. I know that most of you guys like Christmas, but I like Thanksgiving, so I'm, I'm excited. But anyway, we won't be here. We're taking the day off. And then, uh, Melissa, is there another one that we need to, I think it's Christmas time or no? No, we're doing Christmas. You tried to get me to take it off, but I said no. Okay. No, no. We still have time. I'm we have time. We'll work on you. All right, guys. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to continue our series on seedbeds of rebellion. Number what, Tim? 14. Number 14. And we're just getting going. Glory to God forevermore. But tonight, I'm going to do something I normally do not do. I'm going to teach the next few sessions, maybe two or three of them, out of the classic Amplified Bible. For all those watching me, it's the classic Amplified Bible, not the new one. The new one, uh, it's, it's terrible. Yeah, so don't get that one. Try to get a classic, which they don't print anymore. I'm hoping Kendall Copeland or somebody will print them up. But uh, I'm going to be sharing out of it because there's so many good scriptures relating to what we're doing. And so uh, I'm going to start off in 2 Timothy chapter 3. And it says this, but understand this. Everybody say, understand this. So we've got to understand this because he's talking about what, us, the people that are living right now. Understand this, that in the last of the last days, Greek, the last of the last days, the final rodeo, the last roundup, the last ship coming in, in the last of the last days will come set in perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. That's just what every pastor wants to hear. <laughs> Verse 2, for people will be lovers of self and utterly self-centered. Everybody say utterly, utterly. self-centered. Now that is the, the thing right there, that, that sin of uh, being self-centered sets off the fruit of all the things that we'll be talking about underneath this. And let me read it to you. This is the list you don't want to be on. Self lovers of money, aroused by an inordinate, greedy desire for wealth, proud, arrogant, contemptuous boasters. They will be abusive, blasphemous, scoffing, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, and profane. They will be without natural human affection, callous and inhuman, relentless, admitting of no truce or appeasement. They will be slanders, false accusers, troublemakers, intemperate and loose in morals and conduct, uncontrolled and fierce, haters of good. They will be treacherous, betrayers, rash, and inflated with self-conceit. They will be lovers of sensual pleasures and vain amusements more than lovers of, rather than lovers of God. For all, although they hold a form of piety, true religion, they deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it. Their contact belies the genuineness of their profession. Avoid all, avoid all such people. Turn away from them. That's pretty intense, isn't it? Wow. Notice it did not say, come into unity. Now, I believe in coming into unity if people want to, you know, get on hot for God. But if you don't, you know, I'm not going to uh, unify with a bunch of nonsense. Everybody say it with me out loud, nonsense. nonsense. Okay, now, so this is, uh, I want you to notice this self-love, self-centeredness. Self-centeredness is at an all-time high. And, and it's really happened the last about 20 years. Uh, I, was, I was looking at a commercial today. You, you see them all the time. Oh, the government's going to give free this away free for you. The, you know, and, and I look at it, and I want to kick the TV. <laughs> there is no such thing as the government giving you anything. It's impossible. Yeah. They may give you something, but it's not the government doing it. It's me and you who actually pay taxes. The government doesn't have any money. And they ought to remember that sometime. In fact, what we ought to do is just not pay taxes for a while and see what happens. 
I didn't say that, did I? Strike that off of the... Okay. So anyway, there is a spirit of self-love, clearly. The spirit of self-love. Write that down. Self-centeredness. This spirit has clearly got a stronghold on many of God's people. Don't shut me down because I'm preaching real good here, but here we go. Here we go. Uh, especially those who are fairly new or not taught. How do we defeat this crazy self-love? Good question, Pastor Tom. Well, it's quite simple, but we must learn to get God's agape control of our lives. In other words, the love of God is the exact opposite of self-centeredness. In fact, I was going to talk tonight about uh, servanthood connected to this, but we'll have to wait. Because the Lord had me back up, he says, back up and don't go so fast because you got a lot of new people and they haven't heard some of this stuff. All right, so, well, it's quite simple to talk about walking in love. It's another thing to do it. Yeah. It's challenging. Yes, it is. So go to 1 John chapter 2. And you know what? I hate when preachers say, oh, you know, you need to walk in love, and then they never tell you how. Tonight I'm going to tell you how exactly to start doing it. Okay. Well, so take good notes, Stephanie. Yeah. <laughs> Stephanie loves this message. I know you do. That's why I said it. <laughs> First John chapter 2, verse 3. First John, I think so. Chapter 2, verse 3. Is that right? Yes. And this is how we may discern daily by experience that we are coming to know him, to perceive, recognize, understand, and become better acquainted with him. By the way, I'm using the classic... American, or excuse me, the classic Amplified Bible. If we keep, bear in mind, observe, practice his teachings, precepts, and commandments. Whoever says, I know him, I perceive, recognize, understand, and am acquainted with him, but fails to keep and obey his commandments, teachings, is a liar, and the truth of the gospel is not in him. Verse 5. But he who keeps treasures his word, who bears in mind his precepts, who observes his message in its entirety, truly in him is in him, has the love of God, uh, excuse me, has the love of God been perfected, completed, reached maturity, or allowed to run its full course? See, what God wants is for the love of God to dominate you so it's allowed to run its full course in your life. By this we may perceive, know, recognize, and be sure that we are in Him. That's how you know. Are you, are you uh, attempting to walk in love? Now, you say, Pastor, I'm not attempting, but boy, I'm not doing very well. Well, all of us, I tell you what, are at different levels of spiritual growth. When I first got a hold of this, you know who I got this from? Kenneth Copeland, of all people. And I won't, don't always, he's not always my favorite preacher, but I got a hold of some tapes by him and a couple of books. And Sal and I were living down in, in uh, Southern California in Irvine, and I would go out at night and walk and listen to those and pray in tongues. And I'm telling you what, God worked me over. He worked me over. Oh, my God, you start talking about the love of God, you find out how far out there you really are. <laughs> and I found out I have a lot of growing to do, and I'm not kidding. And when I tried to make those changes, it just was difficult. And I really always got a f funny story from Brother Copeland. He said, I started preaching this. And I would go to a church and uh, they would have me for two or three weeks or I'd go somewhere and have a meeting for two or three weeks every night or, t or two times a day. I go, man, I wish people were that hungry today. She so says, you know, I went to this one church, you know, and I'm, I'm preaching on this subject. And he says, you know, Satan comes immediately to steal the word. Mm -hmm. Isn't that true? Yeah. Huh? You preach on love. Watch it tonight when you go home. You might try to kill each other. <laughs> you got to watch it. And he said, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching about the second night, and all of a sudden there's all this commotion and everything, and he, they, they go out to the, into the parking lot out there, and the deacons are duking it out. The deacons. Demon-possessed deacons. Verse 6. Whosoever says he abides in him ought as a, as a personal debt to walk and conduct himself in the same way in which he walked and conducted himself. So he sets the standard. That's tough. 
That's tough. When you really start looking at it, you go, oh my God, Jesus said wild stuff. You know, we say, oh man, that old, that, the law, the Old Testament, that was tough stuff, you know. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Thou. Well, yeah, then Jesus comes along and says, you know, you idiots. Yeah. He says, <laughs> if you even look at a woman to lust after her, you committed adultery in your heart. And they all went, oh man. <laughs> you know, every guy in the room went, okay, we're all guilty. See, when you, when you, when you say, because it, it's a higher standard, yeah. not a lower standard, a higher standard, you know. And every girl in the room said amen too, okay, because it works both ways. Matthew chapter 7. I'm not going to get on that because my wife told me I should not get on that. Because <laughs> you're going to get, you're going to offend somebody. And I said, well, you know, that's the story of my life. But let me help you with something. Love is the key to everything. Did you hear what I just said? Love is the key to everything concerning the things of God, period. And you got to understand it, but most don't. So this is why I preach about it. Uh, I think Anesthesia made the, uh, the comment that we, we do these messages and we keep doing them. We got that right. But when I start a new church, I take six months on this message. And I get up and I proclaim to everybody, and I'll proclaim it tonight, we will never have a church split. Amen. We're not going to have any dissension in our church. We're not going to have any problems in our church. Our board's not going to be bored. Come on. We're going to get along. We're going to work together. We're not going to have fights and silliness and goofiness and strife and hallelujah. hallelujah. I thought an angel appeared. In... <laughs> Are we there at Matthew chapter 7? Yes. Now look at that. I want you all to watch this because this one's tough. How many here have ever heard this message where they say narrow is the way and there's just a few people that actually find it. Yeah. Jesus is the way. You know, it's the door is narrow. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard in my entire life. Why in the world would somebody preach that Jesus is a loser? That's basically what you're saying. You're saying that only a few people are going to respond to his message. Billions of people on the earth have responded to his message. It's not what he's even talking about. You got to read things in context. Verse 12, so then whatsoever you desire that others would do to and for you, even so do also to and for them. For this sums up the law and the prophets. So what's the subject matter? Say it like Bob Dylan did. Come on. The sub sub subject matter is love. Bob had it right in the scripture here. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Now go to verse 13. Enter through the narrow gate. Now what is he talking about here? Everybody say love. Love is a narrow gate, man. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is a gate and spacious and broad is a way that leads, leads away to destruction. And many are those who are entering through it. Now you can be a Christian or not and do that. Now, I know a lot of Christians that just have a hellish life. They get the, well, I'm not going to use that word. They get the snot beat out of them. Well, I just decided to use it anyway. They, they, they have a constant, now listen, you're going to have trials and tribulations and tests and seasons of life. I understand that. But if you're constantly getting a badger beat out of you, over and over and you don't have any joy and your life is full of depression and you can't hardly get up in the morning. May I say with all sincerity, you need to hear this message and start doing some things about it. Because it, if you're walking in love, the devil can't get to you. If you step out of it, he can get to you. Stella and I found that out easy enough. Just get married and find out. How do we do today? We had a fight. Well, the devil's beating us up, you know. All of a sudden, you know, next thing you know, you got a fever. <laughs> Some kind of crazy thing that's coming on you, you know. <laughs> you know? You see, you get in, and then you get out of strife and everything's fine. Amen. Oh, hallelujah, we're lovers. And then all of a sudden, yeet, you go off. And don't look at me in that tone of voice. You kick a door, punch a wall. Stella throws a cup. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> she's grown past that. Now she points a shotgun and... No, she's pa way past that. So what is the practical way to be able to walk in love? How do we develop in this? Well, there's only several things you need to know. Amen. And the Bible is very explicit and it's easy. It's not hard to find out what it is. <laughs> but then it's doing it. Yeah. To being persistent at something is the pastor's hardest thing. Sometimes I'd like to take my, uh, you know what I think we ought to do? I think we ought to have snowballs up here. Really hard snowballs, like the kind we used to make when we were in Colorado. And we'd, we'd make them really hard and throw them at the truck drivers as they went by. I know we were bad. We were very bad. But some, you know, it'd be good. I could sit here and I could fight. I could look at you and say, they're not listening. <laughs> Bam. And everybody would know because you'd be marked by snow that you were not listening. As long as my aim was accurate, right? The more people you get, the harder it'd be. Go to Romans chapter 10. I'm going to show you how to do it. How many want to learn how to do it? I'm going to show you in two, two sessions. Tonight's the first one. The next time I'm with you, whenever that will be, I will share with you the, the next, next way. If you do these, those two things and you act on what you're learning, you will be a rare bird. I've been doing this 45 years. The people that succeed do this. Amen. The people that don't, don't. Yes, but God chooses, and God does this, and God's sovereign, and God put it all on God, but the Word of God puts it on you. That's right. The Word of God puts it right in your lap, man. Amen. And I don't care what your Baptist sensitivities are or what your Lutheran sensitivities are and what your, what your idea about Almighty God is, that He's just Almighty God and He's going to do what He wants when He wants to. And if He wants to bless you, He will. If He wants to curse you, He's going to curse you and He's going to make you sweat and, and, and you know, put you in the iron lung to teach you something. And there's a thousand different ideas about that. But the truth of the matter is when you boil it all down, there are certain principles that people are not walking in that open the door to these things. If you, there's no condemnation to us. <coughs> if we find ourselves in a situation like that, for God's sakes, don't get all bummed out. I just don't understand people. If you find yourself in a bad situation, come back, repent, and go, get going. See, I can't do anything about your past. I can't even do anything about what you did last week or today. Huh? I was, you know, I watched Donald Trump last night. I thought it was a good speech. I'm just telling you, you know, well, however you feel about all that. But I wish he would have said, you know, let's send the Marines in there and clear all those idiots out. That's what I want. That's where I'm at. So I was disappointed a little bit because I'd like to see us, our government completely changed. But you know as well as I do, it ain't going to work that way. You know what it's going to be? Us praying, us working, us voting. Hallelujah. Doing the right thing, exposing evil. And it's difficult. When we talk about living in this day, to walk in love is a challenge. If you don't believe me, go to Walmart. And if that don't do it, you know, go to Subway or one of these small restaurants. If that don't do it, find, you know, get, oh, turn on the news today. You turn on the news and find out that last year we paid the highest taxes in history. They're taking our money away from us. You know, it's, it's immoral to do that. But here's the key. Okay. They're taking my money away. I got God. He gives Amen. me money anyway. Amen. I don't need to con be concerned about how much those puppies try to steal from me. Amen. You know, Stella, she's a very, very good, she does an excellent job. She loves garage sales. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story here. There's a reason for this. And she's good at it. She'll go, she finds a garage sale, and then she makes friends with all these old women. They're all like 140, but she makes friends with them, you know. And they love her. They love Stella. They just, people love Stella. All over the world, they love her. 
you know, and they don't necessarily like me that much, but they love her. And, uh, but here's the thing about Stella. She'll make friends with them. So she makes friends with these people, and she, has, she gets such favor with them. Like one lady, she has these, garage, these great garage sales every year, once a year. And she'd call Stella first, come on over and get the pick of the litter. You know, and her husband passed. He was a lawyer. Is that right, honey, a lawyer? Was that right? He was a lawyer, right, that passed? He was a lawyer uh, in um, Kiwani. Yeah, okay, so he's a lawyer. He passes. And Stella goes over there. And she says, you know, your husband's a minister, right? Yeah. And he's a big guy. She goes, yeah, that's true. He goes, my husband was a big guy. I got a bunch of suits, wow. a bunch of sport coats. Why don't you come over and check it out, see if they fit. That's awesome. So she goes over there, well, how much are you going to uh, ask for these? Mm. She just gave it to her. About, wow. oh, about $4,000 worth of stuff. Wow. That's, what that's what I'm talking about. Amen, I agree. That's what I'm talking about, see? You're going to, Jennifer testified last week, 16 grand, you know. What was it? I don't know. See, this happens to us all the time. If I walk into, if Stella and I, I know you're not going to believe this, but if Stella and I walk into a business or a restaurant and nobody's there and you wait a little while, the place fills up. Amen. Why? We have favor. We have favor with God. We have a, a blessing that follows us wherever we go. I, I experienced that last Wednesday night. I'm driving home, and you know, when you go out to our house, the last road is the one you got to watch the most because of the deers. They're everywhere, and they're everywhere. And I turned around. We missed, I don't know how many times, I missed like three deers on the way in, uh, on the way there. When, and then all of a sudden, I turned around, and from here to Joel, there was a gigantic doe. It wasn't a buck. It was a doe, huge running full blast, I mean full blast, and he went right by, right by Stella's door, and I didn't even see her until she was right there. Now, all we needed to do, had that do, was just move over a little bit, and it would have been a collision. Of course, we would have won the collision, <laughs> but it would have been a mess, and I've only hit one deer since I've been up here, and it was a glancing blow. But I tell you what, man, I was, I thought, I looked at that and I go, that could have went bad. Yeah. You know, that could have went bad. Yeah, well, that's true. I would have called somebody, one of my buddies. Romans chapter 10, okay? Are you there? And we're going to see how this works now. Verse 10. For with a heart, a person believes. That's your spirit, not your head. Say amen to that. For with your heart a person believes, adheres to, trusts in, and relies on Christ. And so is justified, declared righteous, acceptable to God. And with the mouth he confesses, declares openly, and speaks out freely his faith, and confirms his salvation. Now I like the King James better actually out of this. It, it, it basically says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. The word confession is the word uh, that, that means to agree with God or to say the thing, same thing God says. Everybody say this with me out loud. Agreeing with God, Agreeing with God. brings salvation. Bring salvation. Uh, say it again. Agreeing with God Agreeing brings with God. what? Salvation. salvation. Okay, what does salvation mean? Well, it's an all-inclusive word. Salvation was provided for us, and all the promises of God are yes and yes. amen. Yeah. The promises of God are ours because Jesus paid yes. through the covenant. Mm -hmm. He shed his blood. They are ours. But how come some people lack them? Well, confession is made unto salvation. Let me give it to you this way. Confession is made under saving of your soul or, or your uh, born-again experience. Confession is made unto the healing of your body. Confession is made unto deliverance. Confession is made unto protection. Amen. Yeah. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord. Yes. He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. See what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of people, love, well, we love Psalms 91, you know, but 
They may be do the dwelling, but do they do the saying? You've got to say something. Christianity is the great confession. That's what it was called. They didn't call them Christian. They call it the great confession. Confession or agreeing with God, saying the same thing God says, brings all the benefits of salvation. What's one of the greatest benefits of salvation that we have? The love walk. What am I preaching on? Right? No, you're all right. But we're talking about love here. If you're ever going to be able to walk in love, you're going to have to say something. Now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is a scripture that is not for the faint of heart, Christianity. You start digging into this out of this classic Amplified Bible, and you'll feel so convicted the moon won't rise tomorrow. You, 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 it'll squash your feet so bad. I mean, I first started reading this the way I'm going to do it to you, and I'll tell you what, man, I, I didn't know if I was even saved anymore <laughs> for a while there. But look at it, first, uh, chapter 13, verse 1. If I can speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love. Now, when he says do not have love, he means this, and not, and not operating in love in the Greek. Because you have love Amen. if you're a believer, right? The re, that reasoning, intellectual, spiritual devotion, such as is inspired by God's love for and in us. I am only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. So if we get up here and we got some wild guy, and uh, I say, yippee, it's on now. And we tackle them and they're barking like a dog and everybody's on. If we don't have love, we're nothing. Amen. Amen. Yeah. If Stella gets up and gives a tongue and I give an interpretation, if we don't got love... See, love is the, what, the way those things operate properly. Yeah. The most powerful people you ever see in the gifts of the Spirit are those who know how to love. Yeah, true. Releasing love. Hallelujah. I've even been in services where somebody gave a, a prophecy or a tongues and interpretation, and it just went over the whole, uh, the whole uh, uh, service and just killed it. Wow. I call them killer prophecies. <laughs> and, and it wasn't that anything was said that was wrong. That's what was weird about it. But it came out of a spirit of somebody that really didn't practice much love. I think, and everybody knows it. If everybody knows, then, then what happens is you go, you cringe. Yeah. Yeah. I've had people over the years in my churches. I loved them. I love, I love every, every, all of you guys. And this is not about anybody in here, okay? But I've had them who, when they get up and say something, it, it could be a killer for the service. Just simply because of the way they were. I mean, the first sign of trouble, and they fold like a deck of cards. You know, the first the little trial and test that comes your way. You're going to have trials and tests. Right. Yep. Verse 2, and if I have prophetic powers, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose and understand all secret truths and mysteries and possess all knowledge... And if I have sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains, but have not love, God's love in me, I'm a nothing, a useless nobody. Now let me tell you something about that. The Bible says faith works by love. If you're going to start talking to mountains and demons and making them leave and all that, you better have some love. Because they'll look at you and go, I saw what you did the other night when you punched your wife. I'm sure glad that God doesn't allow them to say what they've seen. In our lives over the years, it could be embarrassing. I make them shut up. I've had them say that. I, one time they said something about me, and I said, you know, my sin is none of your business. Shut up in Jesus' name. But that's how you handle those things. But, I mean, golly. I mean, let's just be honest about it. Right? If everybody knew about our lives... Okay, let me back to the scripture here. <laughs> Notice I said ours. Yeah. I'm not picking on you. I'm, pi- I'm just saying, for every, including me and my wife and everybody else, we just got to be honest with this stuff. We, if we're ever going to grow, yeah. we've got to be totally and completely honest mm-hmm. and stop saying 
It's all Stephanie's fault. Are you ready to hear something tough? Whenever you say, point a finger and say it's their fault, you just stepped out of love. Where's the door? I can, I can feel the eyes piercing through me right now. God is not interested. God knows exactly what your mess, what you, you and and other people around you, mm-hmm. your wife, your husband, your kids, your best friend. He knows what all their deals are. You don't need to tell him. You know what he's really interested in? Your deal. <laughs> Everybody say me. Because I can't change the way Stephanie thinks. And I can't make Stephanie grow. I can pray for Stephanie. I can instruct Stephanie. But God knows. Only Almighty God can make Stephanie do anything right. <laughs> And sometimes it takes a long time before Stephanie ever got there. And if you want to talk about Scott, we can even go further. I mean, it's just the way it is. Patience and long suffering. Are you ready for this? Here we go. Are you ready? Since I, I laid the foundation and hair lipped everybody. All right, here we go. <laughs> Verse 4. Okay, notice how it says this. Love endures long and is patient and kind. There you go, right there. All right, right there, everybody goes, hey. Because I am, I tell you what, I'll be honest, I'm long-suffering. I got that down. Really. And you helped train me that way. But... But here's the thing about that. You can be long-suffering, but sometimes, sometimes, Uh be quiet now. Sometimes I'm not kind when I'm going through the long-suffering. I'm like a grump sometimes. And I'll admit it to you. I still struggle in that area. Now, I'm working on it, and I know you guys all got it under control. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) All right, but here's the way that you really grow. You ready to grow? Not just reading these scriptures. See that love there? Circle it. You might say charity in your Bible. All right? Okay. Draw a little line up there. Write in your Bible. It's a good thing to do. Okay, and put your name. That's right. That's really good. Now we're going to do it this way. Tom, you, pe- you, so you say your name. I'm going to say Tom. Ready? Tom. Endures long and is patient and kind. Uh, first time I ever did that, I thought, I'm lying like a dog. <laughs> but you see, your spirit man is already there. Your spirit man is already there. How many got flesh? Raise your hands. Your flesh is not there. How many got minds? Your minds aren't there yet. This is the way you renew your minds and get your flesh under control. Tom endures long and is patient and kind. You have to say that over and over. Stella had to say it twice. You can also say it for your spouse. If you're married. Right? Say it again. Put your name there. Tom endures long and is patient and kind. Now we go on to the next line. It doesn't get any easier. This is how this is God, this is who God is. God is love. Love never is envious nor boils over with jealousy. Now, see, I never had that problem. I can honestly say no problem. But I know somebody who did, but we won't say. Okay. (laughs) Say it. Put your name in there. Tom never is envious nor boils over with jealousy. All right. Now you have to get a little card out and write these out, these confessions out. And you put them on your refrigerator and when you shave and you say them at least two or three times a day. And I guarantee you, 
You know, you'll be driving down the road instead of giving somebody the California salute. All of a sudden, you'll catch yourself and say, wait a second, wait a second. Right? No flipping the bird. No doing the old whatever Eskimo salute, whatever that is. I don't even know what that means, so don't, don't ask me. But you will start catching yourself. You'll start catching yourself. I said you'll start catching yourself. Pastor Tom, what if I don't do it? You're never going to grow in love. Just not going to do it. Lori knows. <laughs> okay, next one is love is not boastful or vainglorious and does not display itself haughtily. What does that mean? It means strut like a peacock. Think you're better than everybody else. Somehow you know everything, you know, that type of thing. Say it this with, say it, put your name in there. Tom's not boastful or vainglorious, <coughs> nor does he display himself haughtily. What's your Bible say? Puffed up. Puffed up. Yeah, praise himself. All good words. Use the Amplified Classic, though, for the confession, because it just, it really hurts. <laughs> it stings. Uh, okay, verse 5. It is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. Wow. Let me crack my back. Oh, good. Say, Tom, put your name, is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. Good confession. How you doing on that level? See, you have to think, how am I really doing on this? <clears throat> Tom is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. Say, put your name in there. Tom is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. Wow. Isn't this great? See, you start saying that every day, and all of a sudden you start catching yourself when you're rude or, or you're unmannerly or, you know, do something uncomingly. Amen. That's the way it works. That's how it works. Next one, love, God's love in us. Oh, God. Everybody look at me. Say a prayer real quick. <laughs> Say, help me, Jesus, because you're going to need it right about now. Are you ready? Okay. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own right or its own way and is not self-seeking. Oh, my God. See, that's exactly what we're talking about, that self-seeking spirit. If this is making you uncomfortable, you're going to get more uncomfortable in a minute. <laughs> love, God's love, say, say, say it this way. God's love in me, God's love in does, me. Not does not insist on its own rights on its own right. or its own way, own for it is not self-seeking. Self and I see... As I go along these lines, some of you have one line means more than another. Right, right. Yes, yeah, because we all have different things, yeah. you know. For me, basically all of them meant something. But, you know, that was not so much anymore. So, you know, bless my heart. Yeah. And now I'm the pastor, you know. I mean, it's amazing what God can do in your life. Just let him. All right, it gets worse as we go. <laughs> it is not touchy. Everybody say, not touchy. Not touchy. Or, fretful. or fretful. Or resentful. Or resentful. It, takes no account it takes no account of the evil done to it. Of the evil done to it. Oh, got you there, oh, didn't oh, we? Oh. <laughs> Don't feel bad. That is like nobody. I don't know anybody who's perfected in that one. Let me read it to you again. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful, and it takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Now, let me tell you something. That's where, that separates the men from the boys and the women from the girls. And I can honestly say after 45 years, I get pretty close. Mm -hmm. You really got to do something to jar me. 
I just, I don't, you know, people say, make comments over the internet, whatever, I just laugh. It, it doesn't matter to me because it's not, why is it important? Does it hurt your feelings? I mean, think about it. What are your feelings good for? Not a whole lot. Most of the time your feelings are not right anyway. And you're going to allow yourself to be pushed around by feelings and resentment and anger. Like I said, the key to start growing it all in Christianity, if you, if you ever want to, and I hope I don't lose anybody tonight. People are watching me. I know I'll go down from 5,000 to probably 433. If you really want to start growing, you know, how many have ever, how many hear sermons like this on TV? I don't hear many of them. But if you're ever going to really grow spiritually, this is where the rubber meets the road. You're going to have to get to the place where people do anything to you and it doesn't bother you anymore. You just look at it and go, poor sap hasn't learned much. I'm not going to allow that to control my whole life. Go off on a three-day complaining binge and call all my friends and cry and and I don't mean to offend anybody because you're again there's no condemnation here this we've all been through this and no matter what you think you're going through mine was worse and if I wouldn't have found these scriptures and how to do this I would have been just probably never made it I had you know I thought oh my god I had that vision man I had that vision 1978, three, 30 days of the glory in my room and uh, three days of watching my future. Wow. Wow. That's so people and laying hands on people and seeing demons come out and all this stuff we're seeing today. I mean, and then, you know, it, it, God doesn't allow you to get a big head. Because right. when I came out of that, I thought, here I am, Benny Hinn. Sure. <laughs> I'm Benny number two. I know it wasn't even Benny number 33, you know. And I, and then, see, once I went through that, I found out that God has to wring you out like a wet rag and get all the pride out of you and the arrogance out of you and all of this. You know, I'm so special because I can play the guitar and I can sing and I'm like a bird and I need to be on the worship team and I need to be leading this and I need to be leading that. No, you know what God's really interested in? Getting you delivered from yourself. Amen. Then you can allow that anointing to flow through you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And not be offended at anything I just said. This is why people leave churches. <laughs> I was wanting really, I would really love to have, you know, what's the guy's name down in Texas that has the 30,000 people? Joel Osteen. I'd love to have Joel let me speak. <laughs> bring, me, bring me in for a revival there, Joel. Yeah. Bring your whole team up here. Let's see how many of them got devils. <laughs> Busy day at the church building. You know, you know and, and, and I'm here to tell you, man, we're all going to face this stuff. You're going to have to develop in love because when you get down in the mud with somebody and they're grunting like a pig and, you know, and, and, and you're having to be patient. How many sessions is this? 27? And you still don't got it all. And you're working and working and praying and working. And then, you know, this doesn't relate to anybody in here, but people are calling you on the phone with over every 15 minutes with their problems. You got to go to this scripture sometimes and start quoting. Let's say it again. <laughs> it is not touchy. It is not touchy. Or friendful. Or, friendful. or, resentful. or resentful. And it takes no account. Takes what does no that account. mean? What does no account mean? Wow. Does God take account of ours? No. no. Well, I tell you what, if God was like us, he'd probably kill half of us by now. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> I'm serious. It's like, if he was like us, I'd be wiped out. All the, I would have never made it past my first six months. He would have wiped the floor with me and recreated somebody else. That, yeah. I'm serious. You know, he, he, does, he does have an end to his patience. Though. Like, remember, remember Moses? God finally goes, those people, you know. They're out doing, you know, making golden calves and all that stuff, you know. Aaron's backsliding with him, makes him a new God. I mean, I'd like to slap Aaron upside the head if I was him. What are you doing? You're supposed to be the high priest, for God's sakes. And, you know, so it comes down off the mountain, and, and God just says, you know, look, just let me kill them all and start over. I mean, this is just ridiculous. But Moses, of course, jumped in God's face and said, now, Lord, what will the Egyptians say? You know. <laughs> That's really funny. You ever read that prayer? I mean, Lord, what would everybody else say? Because you, you, you told everybody that they're going to be going to the promised land and all this. What are they going to say? And you kill them all. You know, <laughs> what kind of God are they going to think you are? I mean, hilarious, man. It's just like, oh, Moses. Moses was not afraid to go ahead and get in, get in there and intercede, you know. But if it wasn't for Moses, they would have been toast. Yeah, that's true. Amen. This is what intercessory prayer is all about. Yeah. You got to have the love of God to be an intercessor. Yes, God can't give you this heavy-duty travail stuff until you're ready. Right. <laughs> and you'll split you right in half. It could kill some people. It's so intense taking on the infirmity of other people. And sometimes God's showing you what they're involved in. Oh. And you have to keep your mouth shut about it. Because I want to tell everybody. Hmm. Moving right along because that went over so big. But I don't do that. I understand where people are coming from. Everybody, human beings, human beings are, how should I describe this? Fearfully and wonderfully made by God. They're created in God's image. But when they died spiritually, they became like wing nuts. They became capable of anything. And some, and some people, we see what they're capable of doing. And every time I look, think about that, I go, you know what? It's, for, except for the grace of God, there goes me. Yeah. And every time I do a deliverance session, I'm reminded, this could have been you, boy. Amen. And I'm very thankful. Yes. Yes. Very thankful that I have the opportunity to help people. Yeah. I love it, man. Somebody was asking me about that the other day. How can you do that? That's, a, that's just like intense and work. It takes forever. And ugh. I said, yeah, but when you come to the end that's of it. When you come to the end of it, there's nothing like that. The reward is within itself. You don't need any anybody to give you anything. Your reward is going home and going, man, that was fun. We finally won that thing. After all this time, the devil's a liar. You get stronger, and you're able to help more people. Amen. That's the love of God, see? The, all this right here goes into our ministry. <clears throat> Let's read that one more time because that one's so rich. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful and takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Man, would marriages be better if they did that? Man, oh man, oh man, would church be better if we did that? How many believe that that's true? If we could be like that? Yeah. And we can. But it doesn't come overnight and it's going to take work. And I'm not going to, I'm going to sit there and judge you when you make a mistake. I've been there. Hey, I got it down. You know what happened to me one time? <laughs> God's man of faith and power. I mean, they write me up. The, you know, the wild man from Reno's coming. Signs, wonders, miracles, gifts of healings. 
and you, you know, and all this. You know, I, I, I don't almost want to go, God, you know, I mean, talk about pressure. So I get to the church, and I'm always back there praying, right? I got to come out, and I got to go pray, get ready for the service. You know, because we got to have signs and wonders and miracles and healings. And, <laughs> I, you know, I like, felt like coming out and going, what do you want me to do? You know, glow in the dark. What do you think is going to happen, you know? People can get strange with that stuff, put pressure on you. And as a preacher, you got to learn how not to yield to that pressure. So I get out and teach them a Bible lesson like this, see how many stay. So anyway, I was scheduled in this meeting, and I'm getting ready, and me and Stella are talking back at our motel or wherever we were staying. And we had a, what you would call a big West Texas, a number one, Stem winder, blow out of a fight. All right. <laughs> I mean, here I am an hour before signs and wonders time. And I felt about as big after that. I felt, I felt so low, I could have needed a parachute to jump off the edge of a piece of paper. You know, was, that's how low I felt. I, mean, I, I, I went to the Lord and said, Lord, you know, let me out of this. I, 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 I can't do this. I'm, this is terrible. I'm wrong. I'm this and that. And so I went to the Lord and I'm saying, Lord, oh, please forgive me, God. Oh, God, please forgive me. You know, oh, Jesus. Forgive me, Jesus. I repent. And the Bible says if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. It doesn't say how for three, three hours to try to get him to do it. So for, I'm carrying on. I'm carrying on like a spoiled kid. <laughs> God, you know. Sounded like a you know old time Pentecostal woman. <laughs> Sound like a train coming down the tracks, you know. Finally, I, I said it again. I said, oh, God, please forgive me. He goes, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> I said, you know, the thing I did before I got it in here. He goes, did you confess it? I said, yeah, but you, he says, I forgot it then. Wow. Hallelujah. So who's got the problem, God. Or me. I have the problem until I get it out. And then what am I supposed to do now? Am I supposed to just, you know, walk around all night? Woo! You know, should, should I come out and not have the service because, you know, I made a mistake? Everybody in that place has made a mistake that big. So what happened in the service? One of the greatest meetings I ever had in my life. The grace of God was so powerful, knocking people all, all over the place, getting stuck to walls and everything else. I mean, it was a stem winding Holy Ghost twister. <laughs> Amen. That's how we have to be. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Amen. Verse 6, we're almost done. Can you, can you stand some more? Oh. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevails. Amen. Now, on that one, you can see the other side of things. It does not rejoice when there's wrong. Right. It understands wrong. It understands somebody did wrong. Mm -hmm. But it also, praise God, believes in truth and right and prevailing. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you something about life. It's not going to do any good for you to beat somebody over the head who's not getting it. I've seen people who didn't get it for years. You know who some of them were? Me. I'm pastoring 200 and something people. Have one of the strongest churches there's ever been in Reno, Nevada. Things smoking. And... Some of my right-hand men come to me and say, Pastor Tom, we, we would like to, to talk to you if we could. I said, sure. What do you want? You little whippersnappers. <laughs> they said, Pastor Tom, we, we love you. 
but there's something here that we need to we need to we need to talk to you about. I said, "Well, what is it, you little whippersnapper?" They said, "Well, every time we try to talk to you about something, you interrupt and you just go off on your own. You start controlling the conversation and just go off because you know so much, and it really hurts." I went. Because up to that time, I never saw that. And all of a sudden, it was like God pulled the veil back. And I felt about low enough to jump off the piece of paper with a parachute. And I went home and thought about that. And I thought, oh, my God. And I learned a lesson. And I've been a good listener ever since. Verse 7 is going to hurt you. <laughs> Love bears up under anything. I can't take it no more. Hey, never say that. There's certain things you should never say. I can't take it no more. I'm fed up with this. Uh, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You're stronger than that. You're stronger than you think you are. You are. Are you guys quoting scriptures at each other over there? <laughs> <laughs> Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. Anything and everything that comes. Anything and everything that comes. Hallelujah. I don't care what it is. It bears up. Is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Wow. That's tough. Especially when I turn on the news. Yeah, exactly. But it's ready to believe. It's ready to believe. Yep. The best and, uh, and for every person. Wow. That's love. Yeah. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances. Everybody say all circumstances. Oh. Good, bad, nasty, the good and the bad and the ugly. And it endures everything without weakening. Wow. It doesn't even get weak. You've got to confess that Tom never gets weak. Amen. Amen. Verse 8. Love never fails. Hallelujah. Never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. Woo, look at Abby. Wasn't that good? Everybody say it with me out loud. Love, Love never, never fails. fails. Never fails. So if we're going to be walking love, we're going to learn how to not be failing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know about you, but that takes some thought. And if I was you, I would go home and I would get me my classic Amplified Bible, or you got it on your phone, a lot of you guys, and just write it out. And put your name in there and start confessing that every day. Confession, just like it, where love is, you put your name. Tom Durst, Lawrence, patient, kind, so on and so forth. And keep doing it, keep doing it. Drive around, drive around and say it all the time. And put it on a tape and listen to it all the time and confess it. Because if you do that, all of a sudden, you will begin to see something happen in your life. You'll begin to see you will grow faster in three months than you have in 20 years. That's true. Amen. Amen. Man, that was good. Was that worth coming out for? I think that's better than 24. I, I don't know, you know, I, I don't know, you know, that's close. Yes, it is. I remember uh, when I first started seeing that program, I had a friend, Bob Longin, out in Oregon. I said, hey, Bob, you ever see 24? Nah, I don't watch TV. I go, try one, Bob. Just one. Tell me what you think. I called next week, and they had went through half the season. They're staying up till 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Not getting any sleep. Oh, Jesus. We're going to go ahead and receive an offering. If you need an envelope for your uh, offering, raise your hand, and they will serve you. And all you guys out there, in, uh, if anybody's left <laughs> in Internet land, Please uh, go down and you can give your offerings by, uh, um, by giving on the internet. 
There's a link and so on and so forth down there. And we want to thank all of our partners. We got a very, very nice start to the week from one of our partners this week. We got, a, we got half of what we need for the whole week in one shot. That's what happens in, in recessions and, and, and what do you call that, inflations. When you got faith, it don't matter what the devil tries to do because God's bigger than that. Hallelujah. Amen. And Father, I pray for each and every individual tonight because I know that this stung. It stung me too because I hadn't read it for a while. But Lord, in Jesus' name, I'm praying for everybody that they'll take it the right way, that they'll consume it, put it into practice. In Jesus' name, and when Satan comes to steal the word tonight, nobody will go off. You'll catch yourself in the name of Jesus. How many of you know we are in a spiritual war? And you know another thing? We're in a war with deer. <laughs> So when I step out that, in Jesus' name, dear, stay away from me. I love you. You're beautiful, but you know, I don't want to get one. God bless you. You're dismissed. Love on one another. See you Sunday. By the way, no service Wednesday next week.